I'm excited about tonight. I, I wish really that there was a Sunday morning crowd here, but that's not diminishing this crowd. But I wish everybody was here to hear it. Um, Sister Teresa is going to come and she's going to speak on the subject of worship. Don't know anybody better qualified, in my opinion, to do that than her. And that's one of the things we're going to focus on this year. Uh, here tonight, we're going to practice uh, picking up that weapon called a generous heart. And uh, I will tell you that God will open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing upon you that there's not room enough to contain. Anybody believe that? Anybody still believe in the power of giving? Man. So we're going to pray and wait on you for this offering and then... Sister Teresa is going to come. I want to give some honor and thanks to our whole worship team. Everybody that sings, everybody that plays, every sound person, everyone that runs the slides, every social media photographer, anybody that does anything that sends out the word. And of course, our pastor, let's not forget him either. He's real good. He's real good. Can you sing this with me? Let's forget about ourselves. Yeah. Concentrate on him and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him and worship Christ our Lord. Christ our Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves Concentrate on Him and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves. Concentrate on Him and worship Christ our Lord. Oh, worship Him. Christ. Last week, our pastor laid a great foundation for me to build upon over these next two weeks. And I'm going to talk about eight Hebrew words for praise and worship that are within the Bible. Every time that the word praise or that the word worship is mentioned throughout the Bible, there are eight different Hebrew words for that one word praise or one word worship. And you're asking me, well, how do you know that? Because it just says praise or worship every single time. Ta-da! <laughs> it's out of the Strong's Concordance. Every word in the Bible is traced back now, I'm not sure if you can take my effects out, but if you could do that for me, I'd appreciate it. When I hear my voice echo back to me, it's very strange. <laughs> so every word in the Bible has a Hebrew word that is attached to it. Um, and I don't know if any of you have studied Hebrew or Greek or anything like that, but every word in the Hebraic language, every alphabet letter has a specific thing, and sometimes one little dot 
over that letter or over that word can change the whole entire meaning. But in our English language, we only have specific words for specific things, okay? So does that make sense to everyone? So tonight I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on four of the eight and next week I'll focus on four of the other ones. And tonight I wanna talk about the ones that don't require music. How many remember last week our pastor saying that you can worship the Lord and it doesn't have to involve singing and it does not have to involve music. So if you don't think that you have a good singing voice, you still have the ability to worship and praise the Lord. So that being said, everyone in this building is a praiser and everyone in this building is a worshiper. No one can say that they can't. If you have breath, you can praise. You can worship. All right? I just want to say, too, if you do not have a strong concordance like this, which they have them at all the Christian bookstores and probably even the used bookstores and stuff like that, but they do have it where you can download it on any kind of device. I have it downloaded on my iPad. I have it downloaded on my phone. When I read the Bible, I'm one of those that probably only get like three or four verses at a time because I look up every single word. I'm one of those weird people. But I like to know, is it really saying what it's saying or am I just, you know, so, so I do that. The first word that I want to talk about tonight is yada. It's Y-A-D-A-H. And Matt, I cannot see what you have on the screen. So, <laughs> I'm glad I have my paper. <laughs> I am so nervous, and I know that you all think, well, she gets up there and stands in front of us all the time. How can she be so nervous? It's a whole total different ballgame when I'm doing this. Okay, so to yada means to revere or worship with extended hands, to hold out the hands, to th even to throw a stone or an arrow. Did you catch that? So, extended hands. And let's look at the scripture in Psalms 76, 67, 3. It says, let the people praise Yada, you, O God. Let all the people praise Yada, you. In that instance, that means let the people praise by throwing up their hands. You, oh God, let all the people lift up their hands to you. So in those, that scripture right there, that is giving you the permission, if you need that in this building tonight, that is giving you the permission to lift up your hands. All right? I don't, so when we're up here and I say everybody in the room, lift your hands. That's because this scripture right here that I can ask you to do that because it's a commandment that he's given to us to lift up our hands. Amen. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a worship service and you're singing or you're in the middle of a service and all of a sudden you just feel this need to extend your hands? You feel that. Because it is us reaching outward towards the Lord. That is that yada that I'm talking about. That you can give him praise by extending your hands towards heaven. Now that last little bit of that, it says to throw a stone or an arrow. When we talk about, we've said it up here a hundred times, my praise is a weapon. <laughs> my praise is a weapon. This right here, that is your, one of your weapons. It is not you throwing an actual stone or an actual arrow, but it's like an arrow going up. Hey, I'm going to praise the Lord regardless of what situation that I'm in or what's happening around me. I'm going to throw up my weapon and I'm going to pierce something in the darkness. I'm not going to let it keep me 
down here, I'm going to go higher. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. Oh, I need to say this too. The absolute opposite of yada is the wringing of hands. Like, oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to make it through this. This is how you make it through this. By uplifting, forgetting about yourself, and going ahead and giving the Lord praise. Any how many of you have, I, I know I have, have just sat and stewed over something? Does it change it? What does it do, actually? Oh, ten times worse. Ten times worse. I'm going to move on to another one that still focuses on the uplifting of your hands. And it is Toda. It's an extension of the hand of thanksgiving. A confession. A sacrifice of praise. Thanksgiving for things not yet received. <laughs> a choir of worshipers, expectant praise. Now we just talked about that the absolute opposite of Yoda is wringing your hands and stewing and contemplating and worrying and fretting. This Toda is when you go ahead and you give God praise even in advance for something that you don't see right now, but something that you're hoping to see in the future. So I want my children to be saved. Okay? You may see me over there and I just may be doing all this right here. I may be doing fighting something in the spirit, honestly, because I'm praising him in advance. I'm probably over there calling my kids saved. I'm probably calling my kids set free and delivered. I'm probably calling my kids that they are walking in the fullness of the calling that God has placed upon their lives. I'm calling my kids kids that they are filled with the spirit and that they're walking and serving the Lord the way that he would have them to. So if you have something in your life that you are hoping to see the Lord do, something that you don't even know, if that you know within you, you can't change, this right here changes it. It changes it. It doesn't leave it the same. <laughs> Let's see the verse that goes with this. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What man can do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises, toda, to you. So in advance, even though the enemy may be doing his thing we can still be doing our thing with the lord and it's gonna make a difference it's 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 war i'm sorry to put it that plain but it is it is absolute war and this is something that will change the atmosphere for you and it will change the atmosphere in the spirit now i'm going to read a little something to you this is This is a, a, psych, a psychologist out of Harvard. She wrote a book called Presence. She discusses how body language and position can affect the level of cortisol or stress hormone. Just by engaging in the power pose, as she calls it, of walking around with your hands in the air for two minutes individuals were able to lower their stress and boost their confidence while others in a powerless pose of slumped shoulders and a lowered head and hands down saw an increase in their stress and reduction in confidence. Hmm. 
We already know that raising your hands as it is a universal and biblical sign of victory. But when you combine a victory power pose with praise, you get real power. So if in the world they know that this makes a difference, just think of what you're doing in the spirit. I'm telling you, when you get home into your house, just start walking around. Just start holding your hands up to heaven. And I'm telling you, it will make a difference. Now, when you begin to say out of your mouth, thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. You are good. I know that you're going to work the situation out. Yes, everything has to change. That faith sparks and picks up in your spirit just by turning our focus off of ourselves and putting it on the Lord. Jesus. You know what? Everything. You can't make this stuff up. He is so good. He created us in such a way that is so amazing. If we will just take these principles and put them in our heart, my goodness. So, so good. The next one that we're going to talk about is Barak. And it means to kneel, to bless God as an act of adoration, to salute, to thank. And Psalms 34 1 says, I will bless or Barak the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, when we talk about bowing down, it means to kneel, to bless. It's an act of adoration, to salute. You know, in the natural, when we have a king or we have some dignitary or we have something, you know, there's certain protocol that you do, you know, you stand on this side or you don't do this or you do that and you kneel, you curtsy, whatever they would, you, you know, that you would do, but you show reverence, you show adoration, you show that they are of royalty, of height, of recognition. So, who is the greatest and most worthy, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? No one on this earth, no one on this earth deserves as much recognition and as much honor as the Lord Jesus Christ does. So that is another way to barak means to kneel, to show reverence. That's why when we pray, a lot of times, what do we do? We get down on our knees. That's why, uh, that's a sign that you surrender. If you were to get pulled over by the cops, what do they tell you to do? Get on the ground. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, they tell you, get on the ground because they are superior to you. Not that the Lord is like a police officer. But at the same time, he is someone that is worthy. He's worthy of the honor that we show him by bowing down. And that is a form of worship. And the last one that I'm going to talk about tonight is, I don't, I don't know if I can say this one now. It's Shaha. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. Sure, that works. Literally means to bow down. So Psalms 96, 9 says, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Fear before him all the earth. To bow or to worship is a sign of humility. Worship is fundamentally about humbling ourselves before an awesome God. Worship is about submission to the goals and the purposes of our king. Bowing before our king is 
in re is a recognition not only of his superiority, but also of his right to command us and our responsibilities to obey. This also has a physical response. Worship is not just an inward response. Now, I've had so many people tell me, well, I'm worshiping in my heart. Or, you know, I'm not very loud, so I'll just do it inwardly. That's not all the way biblical. Yes, we can worship from our heart, and yes, we don't have to be loud 24 hours a day, but it does cause a physical response. Our hearts and our bodies are closely connected when I physically bow. It reminds my heart to submit to his purpose, to his way, and not of mine. So when I bow before the Lord, and I reverence him for who he is, I'm coming under subjection to him. I'm coming under subjection to his word and how he wants me to come before him. So tonight, Tori's gonna come play. I've tried not to be long-winded because as a girl, sometimes I have a lot of extra words. But tonight I want us to put these things into action. I want to give us a little bit of time. If you have to leave, I won't be mad. But I'm going to ask, take a few minutes. Humble yourself before the Lord. Yeah. Bow down to him. If you have something in your life that you're needing the Lord to change, lift your hands. If you have something in your life that you need to submit, something that you need to, for him to take care of, lift your hands. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ask that everybody get out of their seat. I am one of those people. You cannot worship and be still. I know some people can't walk, can't do things like that, but, they, but you can do something. You can lift your hands, you can bow, you can do something. So tonight I'm going to ask that everybody in this building, everybody that's here can do something. You can either lift your hands, you can wave your hands before the Lord, you can come up here, you can talk to the Lord if you need to show him, hey God, I am fully submitted to you. If you need to do something like that, I want you to just go ahead. I'm going to walk around the room. I'm probably going to be a little bit louder than everybody else, but that's all right, because there are some things that I need the Lord to fix for me. There are some things that I need the Lord to work out. So tonight, I'm just going to ask for you to do something in this room. Walk around, uh, wave your hands, come kneel, do whatever that you feel like you have need of tonight. And let's just worship the Lord in his holiness. Let's Barak, let's Todah, let's Yada, and let's Shirak tonight in the name of Jesus.